all right guys welcome back to the channel so we're going to talk about how to build uh, strong cavalry forces in this game and um, you know if you can not all clans are created equal um, <laughs> sometimes you just can't that's the first thing you should know uh, sometimes you know depending on who you pick right but let's say you pick a clan and that's your intention and you're not gonna play Takeda even though I am gonna use Takeda as an example because they're probably the most straightforward example um, so the first thing about it right is that there is a sweet spot in terms of your level which is five so you want to at least get to five now why five because when you get to five and I'll show you guys you can actually see it here under military you can see the horse there and how it says level six and it's orange anything below five and the number will be blue the level will, will be blue um, anything below five is very low damage so you at least want to hit five once you hit five five through eight you'll jump up to orange that's when you get close to a K in damage that's when you're in some cases you might hit a K depending on the officer and the situation right because your damage is always you know there's gonna be those factors like who's my officer what's his valor who am I hitting what's morale at okay but as a baseline you want to hit level five so you can start to see good damage anything below level five you know you're gonna hit 200 damage 300 damage it's just not something that is really worth looking at while you're below five you know once you hit six you enter tier two and of course the final tier is tier nine that's the cap unless you're the Takeda the Takeda have a unique policy that let them go beyond level nine let me see if I can hit nine actually I think we're waiting on this policy to finish and then I might be able to jump up to nine but the Takeda can go beyond nine uh, you know they can go beyond mortal limits I guess all right that's built No, still at six. Maybe, maybe I need a. Uh, I need to actually build some stables. Okay. Uh, so I'd have to build the stables. So the stables will give me plus one. Okay. Anyway. So you want to hit five. Now there's three pillars to getting, hitting that sweet spot, that magic number five. Okay, in the game, and equestrian the trait equestrian and it's kind of the same for muskets with gunnery isn't really a big factor into it which is kind of weird because when i started this game I, I thought okay i need people with equestrian that's how i get my cavalry up or if i'm playing muskets i need gunnery not really it's not really a factor these are so these are the big things the first one i'm going to show you is right on the map you can check it so if i hit the touchpad on the playstation i'm not sure on the uh on PC I'm not sure what you'd have to hit but you go down to landmark here go underneath go to the horse ranch and turn it on you can see all the ranches on the map highlighted these are all the stables you can build this is why I mean that uh this is what I mean that you can't just um it's just not equal you know in some regions you just can't use cavalry that's just how it is it's like well, actually, you can. You can, but it's going to be much more difficult. This greatly aids just having access to one. You know? This is why we're using the Takedo, because you can tell that they are the force to use. Just like in history. Okay, so, what's the big deal with the ranches? The ranches give you, once you built them, a ranch will give you three. Three levels towards that force's uh, cavalry level when it deploys, right? Now, one of the things about these stables, these ranches, is that you can focus in on them right when you start the game, okay? So for example, to show you guys, if you go to Fukashi Castle here, right? I can go over, I can tab over to the county, and I could look through each county until I find where the ranch is. So you can see here, Wada County, it says major ranch settlement horse ranch there's nobody working on it so right from the beginning of the game what I can do is to focus in on it I can go to domain Dominion click on Fukashi go down to Wada, 
And it, there it is again. So you can see it there. Major Settlement Horse Ranch. And I could get somebody working here right away. Okay, sometimes, depending on your situation, you might be lucky enough to where your main capital already has a ranch, right? Like Shingen's capital here, which I'm not going to try to say. Uh, Kyo Raishi, it has a major settlement already, a horse ranch. Again, there's nobody here. So what you want to do, you go to Dominion, get somebody working on it. And it's even better, a substitute in this case, but it's even better for your capital because not only can you put somebody there, remember that this person, whoever's working in the county, in order to get the major settlement, they have to cap everything out. So this guy's got to develop the agriculture to four, the commerce cap to three, and he's got to build the three land developments before he gets access. But because it's your capital, you can personally spend labor every month yourself. Go to development, go to that county, and help. You know, doing something. It doesn't matter what. Whatever you, whatever you want to do. But you can double down on that county to start building it up faster. So that you can get access to that horse ranch. Because again, it gives you three. Okay? That's one of the main ways. That's one of the things that adds you. Now the thing about these, these three pillars is that you only need two of them. Okay? So let's go through the other ones. So the next one is the one I was just doing. The one that everybody knows is equestrian instruction. Now for this one, the main thing that you need that kind of gatekeeps you a little bit is you need conservative officers. The prestige, you're going to hit it naturally because you're going to expand anyway. But the thing that could hamper you a little bit is the conservative tenant requirement. Because not only do you need an officer with conservative tenant, but you need a guy, you need a guy who has 4,000 who has captain rank, at least. So you see, while I'm on the menu here, it says that there's three of them. The game's already checked to see if they have that honor requirement. You might play as a forest and it says you have no conservative tenant officers. That's not necessarily true. You have to go under the screen here and look because you will have people buried in the chart like this guy here. When you go over him, it says he cannot do it because he doesn't have captain rank. So he's not counted among those three. These are the three that are counted, but you actually have more officers. There's more officers here that have the conservative. So you want to go under here. The Takedar is set up to just, you know, go straight into the stratosphere with horsemen right away. But most forces, you're going to have to go into the charts and look to see who do I have, how much honor do they have. You know, you, if you go over to station, you can see. So, for example, this guy has conservative, but he's only got 1,500. He's got to get to 4,000. You can kind of chart your course, right? Hitting equestrian instruction level one is very easy. You know, it's baseline. But once you get to level two, remember that the officer requirement goes up. So now you need two officers that each have 4,000 honor. If you want to get level three, which I don't really think is necessary because level three is late, late game. But you know, you're, you're going to need three officers that each have 4,000. Not that difficult, but hitting that level two can be a little tricky for some forces. You know, it's easy. I would say it's very easy to get the level one. It's very easy for you to choose a guy, focus on his honor. Okay, when you go to war, let him occupy. Let him occupy. Let him um, draw first blood. Let him wipe out units to get more honor. That's very easy to do. But getting two guys, it's going to take a little bit of planning. But again, equestrian instruction. That's the next thing. It'll give you one. It'll allow you to buy stables or build stables, I should say. One thing about stables you should know is that they do stack. So you probably can't do it for every building, and you shouldn't. But on your main castle, you could easily stack two stables to double up on the effect. So you can get two from that, for example. You can get three from a stable. That's already level five. Or you can build, let's say you have two stables built and you have equestrian at level two. Well, now each of those are worth two, so that's four. So now you're right within reach, right? So equestrians, again, another arm, another strong pillar for that to build uh, your horsemen forces up. Now, the last one is the conservator trait. So if you go to council official under conservator, you can only appoint one. 
but you will have officers that have one of the three conservator traits that help build cavalry forces. Now there's three different traits that focus in on it. The first one's called improved cavalry. And this to me is the worst one. Basically it increases the, the strength of the force of the damage that's done, but you have to have equestrian trait. And the reason that, like I said, I think equestrian should be considered last is because it's very unreliable. It's the most inconsistent thing to find on an officer, you know? So there will be forces that will have improved cavalry. Somebody will have this as a conservator trait, but then you won't have anybody who has equestrian. So it's not going to, you know, you, if you look at the disadvantage, if you don't have a trait that's associated with cavalry, your damage is nerfed into the ground. So this is, it's a double-edged sword and it's the worst double-edged sword, right? Now the one that's the best is the one, one right underneath it here, Cavalry Drill. Cavalry Drill just increases, gives you a flat level increase. It's incredible. This is incredible. The drawback isn't really a drawback. It decreases your focus on muskets, decreases your musket level. So your cavalry up into the stratosphere, your musketry down into the ground into the depths of the earth okay but it's fine because you're going to focus one or the other the way this game is designed well there are some hybrid builds and i'll probably talk talk about them in a future video for the most part the game is designed to focus on one or the other so you focusing on increasing your horseman's power but decreasing your musketry doesn't matter this is basically a blank this is just a flat increase so this is the best one you always want cavalry drill Improved cavalry, if you have to deal with it, you know, you can work around it. The reason it's the worst one for me out of these three conservator traits is because you really do have to work around it. I mean, you're just going to have forces that are not going to be able to take advantage. It's going to happen. You're going to forget to, to include a guy with equestrian or you're going to forget that he's at a different castle. And now the castle that you're sending your guys out, your horsemen out that has stables built in it, that has a horse ranch, because it doesn't have a guy with a trait, all your damage is going to be nerfed into the ground. Trust me, this is, you know, it's, it's going to happen. If you have to take it, take it, okay? Now let me talk to you about the one that's in the middle of the road, because it's, the Takeda actually don't have it, but you know who do have it? Is the, uh, I don't know if they're a sleeper build in this game for cavalry, but I feel like they probably are. The Ryuzoji clan. So the Ryuzoji clan has a ton of options. Now they have their own problems with getting off the ground and getting like strong horsemen, but conservator trade is not one of them. So they have improved cavalry, two guys, and they're different tiers. One thing you should know about conservator uh, roles is that there's different tiers of them. Okay, so that's why you, this one's got gold plate, this one doesn't. It's because this is the strongest version of it. So not, not all roles are, uh, are uh, created equal either. They can be named exactly the same, but the gold-plated ones are much stronger than the non-gold-plated ones. And there's actually three different tiers to these conservator roles as well. I think they only have two of them, but there's the middling one. This, this is, you can see this is Feast or Famine here. 25% all the way up to 100. There's, there's a middle one that's 50% that's not featured here. But you can see the third different version of a cavalry focus trait is called cavalry supplier. This increases the level. And again, depending on who you have, it's going to vary. There's both normal versions, like you can see here to the right. You can, and there's also gold plated versions, the, the strongest version of it. The drawback is just gold income, which you can build around. To me, this is the second strongest of the three traits. This is the middle of the road because you can build around that gold income. You know, if you really want to, you can you can work your economy to include that in your balance, in your budget balance so that you can get stronger horsemen. So, again, they don't have the middle one, but there is a middle cavalry supplier version that I think increases it by level 3 and you get like a 20 or 25% gold reduction, I'm not sure. But this is the third one, okay, of the conservator traits. So this is the second one. This is the worst 
we have to put them in categories improved calories the worst one like i said it's just sooner or later it bites you in the ass sooner or later you find yourself deploying somebody and you just don't have the person with the trait and um it's it sucks it sucks when that happens and of course the best one is a uh, cavalry drill just a flat increase no drawback at all really i mean that's nothing doesn't matter don't care about muskets because you're you're focusing on horsemen anyway so that's the third pillar like i said earlier the best thing about this system is that you only need two of them really okay everything else is gravy so you can have let's say you can, you can have access to equestrian and with some access to equestrian and having somebody with the conservator role you know if i appoint this guy here okay he gives me three cavalry level to everything and then you get equestrian up to level two well that's five right there that's five you've hit that threshold of five that sweet spot where you can start to see some damage okay you've hit it easily um if you don't have the equestrian instruction or let's say you can only get it to level one well then you want to either get look for a stables on the map if you don't have one or you want to look for you know conservator to make up for that and you you know you might get lucky you might have people that have the equestrian trait but that's the thing that i wouldn't count on you know i wouldn't count on i wouldn't count on having access to that all the time you want effects that are static that are available to everybody everywhere equestrian is going to be dependent on the officer and where he is whereas uh the instruction policy is just going to be available everywhere you know you can build the stable anywhere the conservator trait once you get a guy who has a relevant uh conservator trait that's gonna turn on for everybody everywhere you know and like i said the stables to me are still more preferable than having a guy with equestrian if you if you're lucky enough to have it um so yeah i think that about covers it um i'm gonna do a follow-up video talking about the best cavalry forces probably in a week or two and we're gonna cover muskets as well and then at some point i'd really like to cover some of the hybrid builds for this game uh because there are some uh hybrid builds there are some there's some stuff beyond it but these are the main two that kind of stand out these are the two big features of course of the game you know is uh horsemen and muskets i do wish we had a focus on archery because it used to be a focus but you know maybe next game we'll get something like that but uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we will see you guys on the next one. Till then.